On today's Locked On Texans podcast, Cody and I turn our attention to the draft. We're going to linebacker talk today. Jordan McGee, Edric Cooper, who makes sense for the Houston Texans and where? You are Locked On Texans, your daily Houston Texans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to this Wednesday episode of the Locked On Texans podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. If this is your first time listening or watching the Locked On Texans podcast, thank you for stopping by. Please, 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 please please subscribe, like, and comment to the Locked On Texans podcast on YouTube and wherever you listen to your podcast. And thank you to all of our returning listeners coming back, lending your ear for another episode of the Locked On Texans podcast. We talk Texans here on the show, right? On the other side of the screen, Texans credential media member, Sports Illustrated's own Cody Davis. I'm your Texans football analyst, John, some sports guy, Hickman. And we're going to be looking at will the Texans end up looking clueless? They've made a Hmm. lot of moves this offseason, but some of those moves could backfire. You look at restructuring of contracts and a whole lot more that can hurt them in the long run if they do not hit today, not today you know, particularly today, but <laughs> hit now. Uh, we, but we also look at the top 30 visits from both Mr. Cooper and Mr. McGee. Uh, today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Cody. Yes, sir. Let's kick it off with the Temple Owl linebacker, Jordan McGee, just to give you guys mm. a little insight of this young man. 54 tackles, 20 assisted tackles, uh, 13 missed tackles. That was better from the previous year. Uh, and he's lined up around the D-line, lined up 70 times, uh, 70 snaps in the slot. Uh, two in the corner. Who cares about him lining up in the corner position, right? He's a linebacker. Don't want him out there. Hmm. But 470 snaps in the box, a total of 1,670 in the last two years. So he is a linebacker in all of the sense, right? 30 stops, 30 run stops last year, tied at 98. Uh, 11 coverage stops last season. Tied at 159th in the nation, two forced completions, no TDs allowed, no interceptions, and a passer rating allowed of 86.7. Uh, you know, really quick with the linebacker position, do Houston need more, right? We know about the starting two, presumably, right? We look at Christian mm-hmm. Harris, we look at uh, Al Shayer, who they signed in the offseason. Henry T is the backup, he's going to go into his sophomore year. I believe he'll get better with another year under his belt. But uh, is, is, is McGee a guy that the Texans can add to this roster to help uh, be more versatile in their linebacker group? I think so, especially when you consider, John, to answer your question, do the Houston Texans need more? They definitely need more because, like you just alluded to, you know, you already have your two starters, Christian Harris and El Shazira. Those are going to be the two guys we know. If the season started tomorrow, they're definitely going to be your starters. However, Henry T brings up an interesting topic because if he is going to take that second year jump like we all hoping he can, then you're looking at a situation where the Houston Texans would definitely have an opportunity to go out draft a linebacker for their purposes because as of right now, the Houston Texans only have five linebackers on the roster as of right now the three that i just mentioned along with neville hewitt and dale sean phillips neville hewitt we all know he has put together a phenomenal career in houston as your special team unit and then you got to take a look at dale sean phillips he too has also put together a pretty good career on special teams a journeyman um the texans signed him this offseason from the baltimore ravens and he is not your every down linebacker so they definitely need to add depth to that position and i think Jordan McGee can definitely be the type of player that can at least add depth to what the Houston Texans need to mow. This young man is a day three prospect. So you're looking at the Houston Texans having an opportunity to address this need between the fourth and the fifth round. John, I think that would be ideal because by the time the Houston Texans get to that fourth or the fifth round, I'm expecting them to address 
all of the positions at that point that they definitely need to address. Wide receiver, of course, defensive line. You cannot knock how much D'Amico Ryan's love upgrading his defensive line unit. And, of course, the secondary, whether it be corner or safety. I do want to mention the one thing that I love most about McGee is the fact that he is a linebacker that can excel in pass coverage. Last season, according to Pro Football Focus, he ended his 2023 season with a, with a pass coverage grade of 79.8. I understand you can't really you 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 can't really compare the pro football focus grade from college to a pro level. However, John, listeners and viewers, had he been a part of the Houston Texans last season, he would have been the second best graded pass cover linebacker for this organization only behind Christian Harris. And when you take a look at some of the struggles that this that this position group had last year, pass coverage was their weak point, especially considering that when you take a look at the second when you take a look at the secondary more so that safety unit is part of the reason why the Houston Texans finished the 2023 campaign um ranked 26 or 27 in pass defense so definitely look for the Houston Texans to address that linebacking core especially somebody that can help excel their pass coverage defense uh, and I think Jordan McGee out of Kemp out of Temple is definitely going to be that prospect to get the job done yeah, and really quick, I don't want to get caught up too much into his college grade compared to the NFL grade. Uh, we, we see guys have good seasons and then get to the league and struggle. But I think one, one point that you made, Cody, that I 1,000% agree with is where you draft McGee, mm -hmm. right? Not that if you draft him because, you know, I think he's a player that, hey, listen, the last time the Texans played football, the, the run defense wasn't as stout as it had been, right? Uh, and you look at the Colts game, and we can say this about Cooper, who we'll talk about in the second segment, but you look at the Colts game, you look at the, the Ravens game, right? You know, they had a hard time stopping the run. And I think McGee is a linebacker that uh, can help the Houston Texans in that area, right? Uh, you know, mm -hmm. 6'3", 225, by the time he takes a down, in the NFL, maybe looking at 6'3", 235, adding some weight, going through an offseason program. So he'll get bigger. But you look at his, his 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 frame already, I think he's a guy that can come in and really help this team run-wise. And you mentioned his pass covering ability. But but I, I think, again, going back to where you address it, right, do you address it early? Houston has two second-round picks now because of the trade. I don't think that's smart, right? Mm -hmm. Do you address it in the third? Well, what we have of this roster right now, and, and, and honestly, you know, I think this is a good conversation because, to your point, and it's been flying over my head, five linebackers on this group, two are special teamers. One mm -hmm. is a sophomore who had his struggles last year. So they need bodies, right? Not only do they need bodies, but they need that talent and I and I think that's where it gets to okay, maybe third, depending on what you do between now and uh the draft, because they've freed up a lot of money. We'll talk about that. You know, do you have something in mind that will address some of the other needs on this team, right? Third, fourth, and fifth round, and I think fourth and five of those rounds he'll be available. I wouldn't mad, wouldn't be mad at McGee. And, and I think that the possibility of having McGee as a rookie coming to the league and learn Henry T in his sophomore year, having another year under his belt. Maybe you look at those two linebackers, those two young guys as interchangeable pieces that can help this team. And you just add talent to that group. We got Mr. Cooper on the other side. We're going to talk about the AM Aggie product who is flying up a lot of people's boards, but Right now, I want to talk to you about Game Time. Game Time is now authorized. It's now an authorized ticket marketplace of the Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually goes down closer it gets to the first pitch. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets you pick out any specific game or matchup that you love to attend right they got the high profile events as well you talk about getting a good deal when you see these tickets for these games 
guys, you're not going to want to pass up some of these deals like the last minute zone and flash deals. Easy to find and buy MLB tickets for every kind of event in your area. So what are you waiting on? You got a you got a company that's even providing the lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, and job loss protection. Right? Anything goes wrong, they got you covered. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen, to this Wednesday installment of Locked On Texans. John, you and I both agree that drafting a linebacker between the fourth and the fifth round would be the perfect scenario for the Houston Texans. However, the next prospect who has a scheduled top 30 visit with the Houston Texans is linebacker from Texas A&M, Edgerin Cooper. Look. If Adrian Cooper is on the Houston Texans draft board, there's no way in hell they're going to address that need come the fourth or the fifth round because Cooper, to your point, is definitely flying up a lot of people draft board as of right now. His draft projection is a day two pick. But, John, at this point, I would not be surprised if Cooper doesn't last until the third round, which brings us to no. this, to, which brings us to this next point. If it's Cooper, should the Houston Texans go ahead and take a chance to use one of their two second-round picks on this young man who is one of the best linebackers coming out in this year's draft? You know, a friend of the show, a friend of mine, John Crumpler, he has a thread on Twitter about Edron Cooper. Mm -hmm. And I encourage everyone to go follow at John Crumpler on Twitter. Um go down his timeline and I'll retweet it today for so people can see it. He had he did a very good thread on Edrin Cooper. Edrin Cooper may be the best linebacker in the nation coming out this year. Oh. <laughs> Seriously. Edrin Cooper I don't think is going to last past 42, which is where the Texans pick first. So I mean he may make it to 45, mm -hmm. but if Houston doesn't grab him at 42, I don't think he's making it to see that second, second round pick, which was initially mm -hmm. their first, first round pick. Mm -hmm. And guys, excuse my internet really quick. I think I'm lagging, but I'm going to keep going here. Edron Cooper, let me tell you about Edron Cooper. This is just watching a little bit of his film. He is a baller. He can line up anywhere. He's athletic, quick play recognition, and he doesn't miss tackles often. Right, like, and you look at a team that has had issues, whether it may be Kamu Gugier Hill, I know that's in the past, Christian Kirksey, uh, even earlier last season, right, we had some issues with missed tackles all around the team in their linebacker group, right? Cooper doesn't necessarily miss tackles like that. He, he You know, once mm -hmm. he gets his hands on you, he got you. In the open field, he does a very good job of breaking down. And I think, you know, his sideline to sideline speed is what really helps him out because he's getting to wherever he needs to be quick enough to be able to, A, establish himself, break down, right, to where he, you're not going to shake me, you're not going to move me. And, B, if he needs to recover, he's already in a comfortable spot where he can recover as a linebacker. I, I After watching just 10 minutes of his film, of his tape, I loved him. This is why I can confidently say I think he is the best linebacker in the nation coming now. Guys, if I was taking off my reporter hat and I was putting on my fandom hat, <laughs> I would want him up north in New mm. England. Mm. But let me say this. Here's why I think drafting Edron Cooper would be risky in a sense. What you get out of Cooper, we just saw – Christian Harris in the season off that way. Mm -hmm. And so it would have been different if the Texans never signed Aziz Al Shair, but they did. And so now you're looking at a linebacker that's making $11 million a year. We know that he ain't going to just be a rotational piece. 
You're also looking at Christian Harris, who I think ended the year off phenomenally, pick six, getting sacks all over the field. I mean, we we talk about in-season progression. Aside from C.J. Stroud, and I don't know if I can call it a progression because after the first couple of games, he was just already on top of the world, I think. you know. But you can say Stroud, you can say Tank, but from where they started to where they finished on that team last year, who who, who progressed more than Christian Harris? Hmm, that's a good point. So I look at Cooper the same way I look at Harris. And if you draft Cooper at 42, again, because I don't think he's going to make it to 59, <clears throat> if you draft him at 42, unfortunately how this team is built right now, I hate to say it, you would be making a mistake in a sense because of the other positions that need to be addressed. You traded out of that first round to get an additional second rounder. Safety position. I'm not downplaying the safety position and how much of a need it is to upgrade it. The wide receiver position. Those are two positions I think as of right now, because of how this NFL league works you need to upgrade immediately this is a passing league so you need weapons and you need somebody to be able to stop the weapons but also because you have harrison al shair and at 42 you look at some of the available weapons that you can have for cj or you look at maybe the better safeties in this draft that this draft ain't loaded with safeties right i mean not guys that you believe can come in and just maybe start day one Unless the scheme works out in their favor so well, and I like I like the kid Jalen Simpson from uh, Auburn a lot. I think he's maybe going in the sixth or seventh round, but it ain't a lot of dog safeties. So maybe you want to address that position first, kitchens or whoever else out there. But I can't front and say, hey, listen, Cooper ain't worth it. He's worth it, but is he worth it to where you're neglecting other positions that? really may fit what this team needs. I love his tape, guys. I think if you can, again, go to John Crumpler on Twitter, uh, at John Crumpler, go down his timeline, find that Edrin Cooper tra- uh, uh, thread, excuse me. I'll even retweet it. It was such a great thread for you to see how explosive, how athletic, how disciplined he plays, how he gets to the point of attack. He's strong. He's not light in the ass, right? You look at all of those things you want from a linebacker, and Edrian Cooper, he has it, and he's 6'3", 230 right now. So, again, by the time he gets to the NFL, the first season, you're looking at a guy that could be 6'3", 240. So he's not going to put on that much weight. He's going to get he's going to get bigger bulk up, but he's still going to be able to go sideline to sideline and get to where he needs to be. He can cover those tight ends. He is a baller. And I'm going to say – I'm going to take the maybe out of it. He's the best linebacker in the nation. Do you work? Do you risk work? Is it? I'm sorry. Do you risk drafting him at 42? Is the question. I gotta say no. I, I how think the it roster all, is currently put together. Sorry. I, I think it all depends on how you feel about Henry T. I, I, I really do because Ooh. if he is literally, if he is on the trajectory to take that second year leap, and once again, guys, you should already know our disclaimer when we're talking about these young prospects. Of course, we're giving them, um, you know, that three, four, four year grace period to show to, to, to give them time to show us what they can actually be in the league. And I'm not going to put too much against Henry T in his rookie season. I mean, he was a rookie, but we all saw the film, we all saw what happened. He started the season, you know as one of Coach D'Amico Ryan's top linebackers in that rotational unit. And as the season went on and as the Texans started turning their season around, we saw less and less of him. And next thing you know, he spent majority of the season with the special team unit. And there was nothing wrong with that because once again, he is a rookie. There's not too many rookies who are going to come in regardless of the position that's going to come in and have an automatic impact. Like we saw CJ and Will Anderson Jr. do. However, John, I, I always go back to this. How much do the Houston Texans believe that they are about to enter this so-called quote-unquote championship window, which means that they're going to focus on putting the best 53 men out there, which means that Coach D'Amico Ryans and Matt Burt is going to put the best linebackers out there as on, on every single down. And if Henry T, they don't believe Henry T can take that leap and handle the responsibility that's about to come his way in 2024 to get this organization to the next level, 
then I could definitely see them taking a chance on Edgerin Cooper to your point, like you just said. I'm not gonna go as far as say he's the best linebacker, but I would say he is I wouldn't put him no, 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 no lower than five on my list. Yeah. But and, and uh, I also would add this to your point to that, right? A lot of yeah. Yeah, we, we're doing a lot of agreeing today, but it's a good day. To, <laughs> to, to your point, uh, you know, looking at Henry D, man, he is a fifth rounder. Mm-hmm. And you know, hey, I, I think Houston maybe regret, maybe not, and they did with David Singletary, but a fourth round running back that they banked on last season didn't pan out. Will a fifth round linebacker pan out for this upcoming season, or do you want to say, hey, we maybe need to look to upgrade now? And who's to say that, you know, we won't have a role for you to your point in that group? And special teams, well, we may see a little bit more special teams. We we mm-hmm. always going to need special teamers, right? You're on the team, yeah. But we need to upgrade. We need to make sure that whenever we switch out guys, because we saw the Texans do a good job in that nickel defense. We saw a lot of Christian Harris to end off the year, but depending on the down, we saw Perriman in, we saw Perriman out. We may not want to have a huge drop off mm-hmm. on the field. So we can continue to play what type of defense? That swarm defense. And of the McGee, of the Coopers, right? Talking about those two linebackers who will have who will have the top 30 visit with the team. Cooper embodies that swarm defense. He may be a team. He, he, hey, if he's a Texan, that's a damn good draft. <laughs> he, like <laughs> it, they upgrade that rule. My only hope is between now. To the draft, Houston doesn't come out looking like fools doing a lot of this moves, a lot of these moves, and nothing comes from it. We'll talk about that at the end of the show. Hey, the sports calendar is locked and loaded, and FanDuel is making it even more exciting to get in on the action. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. 200 bucks in your pocket you can use to bet on a tournament, MLB, NBA, NHL, and so much more. So listen, all you got to do is visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a big win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Welcome back, Locked On Texans listeners and viewers. Uh, I think it's important before we close out today's show, <laughs> just kind of looking at some of the things that Houston Texans have done as a franchise in the last couple of weeks. And I think the first week of free agency was you know, pretty good. Daniel Hunter, Joe Mixon, Al Sayer, Danico Autry, they added a lot to the defensive side of the ball, looking at bringing in Joe Mixon to replace Devin Singletary. Uh, also, they've done a good job of, I think, getting depth pieces, right? Makuda, uh, Henderson, uh, Miles Bryant, who I think as a nickel will really compete with Desmond King and could possibly win that job out. So, Cody, when we out there for training camp this year, that is a battle to watch for. Mm. Miles Bryant coming over from New England. Yeah. Uh, shout out, shout out to Nick Casario, not forgetting where he came from. He know where home is, but uh, <laughs> and, and the competition between Desmond King. But as of late. They freed up a lot of cap space, restructuring the deals of Shaq Mason, which finally went through, and Titus Howard. Now they sit at nearly $30 million. And we talked about this about a month or so ago. (laughs) If you restructure some of these contracts, well, that means that they're either end up more money on the end of their deal or maybe once they move on to another team, you still have to pay a bulk of that uh, that money. So maybe that can hurt them in the long run. And it'll only hurt them in the long run if they don't take that money that they've created Mm -hmm. and address positions of needs. And I know you guys are probably tired of hearing this, (laughs) but I want to beat on this table. They must look to upgrade both the wide receiver position and the safety position. Both markets right now for those positions are scarce. And you don't free up that money for a free agent unless you're going to sign multiple free agents. I don't think you free up that amount of money for just a free agent. I think you free up that money because you're getting ready to put yourself in play to do what they did before, right? 
It was fell through. Mm-hmm. He tried to trade for Keenan Allen. That fell through. He's an he's now a Chicago Bear. But I think now you're looking at a couple of options. My top option for the Houston Texans definitely would be Brandon Ayuk. Not only does he have familiarity with both Bobby Sloak and D'Amico Ryans, but I do think that his time in San Fran may be coming to an end. Do they feel like they can afford to pay him? Sure. Or they have Debo Samuel on the roster? Or does Ayuk feel like, hey, this should have been done? I feel like I'm the best receiver on this team. I feel like that. Shout out to my boy TP. He feels hmm. like that. A few of us feel like that. And y'all not valuing me enough. Plus, I don't want to play with this quarterback no more. I want to play with a quarterback I believe can actually win the promise game. So, <clears throat> do you trade for him? Is it T. Higgins? Do you have some of that money left to address the safety market? Diggs is still out there. Simmons is still out there. Is Houston looking to trade for a safety? which is kind of rare. I think the last big trade for a safety that I can think of to the top of my mind, you guys correct me if I'm wrong, is Jamal Adams, and that worked out terribly. I think so. Seahawks. so. That's the name that popped in my head. <laughs> yeah, and he ain't played a down since Obama was in office. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we can. Uh, uh, I don't think he played since COVID. And um, that was a long time ago. But for, for Houston, they could end up – this could all blow back in their face. Mm. This could all blow back in their face. And ending up looking clueless, we could probably circle back to it because what was the point of some of these decisions if nothing came to fruition? And they need some of this. They need some of these seeds that they're trying to plant to blossom because, as we mentioned, there is a window, regardless of how they feel or not, right? Few teams get past their window. Hmm. The Patriots, the Chiefs, right? And the Chiefs have done a very good job of retooling up every year. The Patriots have did a very good job for 20 years doing it around Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. But you got to first get to that window and succeed in that window and win in that window. And hmm. this is the time to do so. Um, I, I, I do want to give the Texans credit, at least for this, because – Every time we talk about what the Houston Texans need to do move for moving forward, um, you know, how they need to revamp their roster and all this other good stuff. Of course, John, like you mentioned, we talk a lot about the wide receiving unit. And number two is that safety unit. However, I do want to give the Houston Texans credit for this. And this goes into the reason why I feel like they have something big up their sleeves as to the reason why they freed up so much money. Once again, back to, I think, 31 million dollars in the salary cap space going back to when the season ended all the way to the last time i was in the media availability with coach D'Amico ryan's and even what i heard from him at the nfl owners meeting a couple weeks ago every time he was asked about improving this team there was always four positions that he's that he's always talked about running back defensive line cornerback and wide receiver and John, every single one of those pos- positions outside of the wide receiving unit, the Texans have addressed it in one way or another. We know how many defensive linemen that they added. You traded for Joe Mixon, Joe Mixon, who is still one of the best running backs in the game today, and I do believe he's definitely going to do wonders for this offense, for C.J. Stroud, um, for Bobby Sloy. And then with the cornerback, I know a lot of people are down on Jeff Okuda. I'm not. I think that promising year he had in Atlanta is definitely going to translate here um, to Houston, especially playing alongside Derrick Stingley Jr., learning from Coach D'Amico Ryan's, playing in this defensive system. Um, I think he's definitely going to have an opportunity to thrive. And to your point, the championship window is here. And they need to make sure that they do everything possible in order to bring the first Vince Lombardi trophy here to the city of Houston. Because if they don't, instead of joining your name with the Pittsburgh Steelers and the New England Patriots and and and, and the Kansas City your name going to be utilized alongside the the Buffalo Bills to where every single year we asking ourselves is it time to blow the team up and I oh, hope man. that we do not get into that situation one thing we don't want to see is this team be like the team down 45 Whew. thank y'all for listening to the Locked on Texan podcast today uh please be sure to like Subscribe and comment to the Locked On Texans page on YouTube and wherever you listen to your podcast. Follow me on Twitter at John underscore Hickman 12. And uh, message of the day.
It's Wednesday. It's hump day. We almost here. So let's have a good one, guys. Hmm. And as always, I'm your host, Cody M. Davis. Please remember to follow me on Twitter at Cody Davis underscore 24. Once again, that's Cody C O T Y D A V I S underscore 24. My message to the day goes to all the league commissioners. If you have a team that you hope get into the playoffs, do not find yourself on camera dapping up that oh team player. Because I think that that video that went around social, just type, you know, we'll forget all that. Just go on social, type in Adam Silva, Chris Paul, Golden State Warriors, and you'll see what I'm talking about. But you talk about plugging all the holes. It seems like what the league is doing to the to the Houston Rockets. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you are a commissioner, do not find yourself on camera literally congratulating players that you hope get into the play-in tournament or whatever playoff. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, peace.